Hello students, so welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, since I will not be able to join you for a lecture today, I have prepared a video of the discussion for the next topic, which is other polygonal regions. So in here, we will be discussing two parts, the regular polygons and the irregular polygons. So let's discuss them first. What are regular polygons? So as you know, all the things we've discussed a while ago are all regular polygons because they have the same number of angles or equal sides and equal number of angles, interior angles. That's why, for example, if it's a three-sided polygon, we call that a triangle. If it's a four-sided, it's quadrilateral. If five sides, it's pentagon, so on and so forth. So meaning to say, it is safe to say that they have equal number of sides and equal number of angles, interior angles, okay? Now, of course, for regular polygons, there are two circles revolving around it. It's either it is outside the polygon, we call that the circumscribed circle where all the vertices of the polygons lie at the point of the circle, while the other one is the inscribed circle wherein the, uh, the, the circle is inside the polygon. Okay, Therefore, the points in the circle touches the polygon. Okay, the vertices, or not just not necessarily the vertices, but sides. No, at least the sides are are tapped or or they intersect. Okay, at some point with the polygon. So, for example, if you're given this problem, a regular polygon is inscribed in a circle. Meaning to say, the octagon is inside. Okay, it is inside. A circle. So please be careful with how it is being described because it means that the octagon is inside the circle. Therefore, the circle is a circumscribed circle, right? Because it's outside. So that's why you have to be careful in how it is being said no, in, the, in the presentation. So how does it look like? Okay. So it looks like this. No, so it's an octagon. Okay, it's an octagon. So, oops, where was where is it? Okay, no, 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 no not that one. Okay, this one. So, it has a radius. Okay, so mean to say, the circle mentioned here is has a radius of 20. So let's draw an octagon. So we know so octagon. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's not perfect, guys. Please don't judge. So let's check now if there are eight sides. This one. Is this correctly drawn? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, it's not perfect, but at least it looks like it, no? So it's an eight-sided polygon. Therefore, the circle is outside. So that's why the vertices is touched by some point of the circle. And the radius of that circle now is um, 20 degrees. We know that the definition of radius is from the center of the circle to any of the points no, attached to it is actually 20. So meaning to say the diagonals, actually the half of the diagonals created by the equally sided, equal sided polygon is actually the radius. So is it safe to say that this is actually your 20. So that's 20. The radius is 20 at all sides of the triangle. Okay? And there are triangles created, correct? Now, of course, the sides are unknown. No, we don't know the value of the sides, but they're all equal because it's a regular polygon. Right? We can call that as X. And then what we can do is extract 
one triangle from the presentation. So in that case, let's extract one triangle. And we know that this is the X, no? this is the side, okay, the side from the octagon. And here is actually your 20 because that is the um, line from the center towards one point of the circle, then it's the radius. So that's 20. And we also know that the sum of the entire, right? The sum of an entire or the angles in a regular polygon is 360 degrees, correct? So therefore, um, the sum of uh, the, it's not the sum, but one whole rotation is 360 degrees, correct? No? So one whole rotation is 360 degrees. Therefore, this angle there is actually, if we call that, let's say, alpha, it's actually 360 degrees divided by eight triangles, correct? Because we have divided them into eight sides. So therefore, that's 360 divided by eight. That's 45, correct? 45 degrees. No? So that's already 45 degrees. Okay? So you have um, a lot of ways to find X. So you, you already have two sides and one angle opposite. Therefore, you can use the cosine law. Or you can also... Um, divide that angle no? and find the, the apothem. So we call that the apothem. Okay, the apothem is the right angle from the center towards any side, perpendicularly. That's an apothem. Okay, I'll spell that out. That's apothem. So you, you have two ways to solve this one, to find your x, it's either you will have to compute using the right triangle by cutting, okay, by cutting the triangle into half for you to get the area is equal to one half base times height, or you just have to get the x using the cosine law. So let's use first the one with a right triangle. So we know already that this is the half, so that's only 22.5. This is your apothem. This is half of your side. And this is 20. No? So in, in that matter, okay, in that matter, we have to find the two, which is somehow um it gives you more, gives you more values to find, right? Rather than using the cosine law in this matter but sige lang let's let's find both for you to have other options okay so here using um sokatoa because it is a right triangle right if it's a right triangle we use sokatoa so therefore um this is if we're gonna use first or find a first a is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's our cosine of, okay, see here. Let's not direct it, uh, directly answer it. So cosine of 22.5 is equal to A, okay, adjacent over hypotenuse. So therefore, A is equal to 18.48. So that's the apothem, right? Then this is inch, no? Inches. Then, if we're gonna find the x time x over two, therefore that's co uh, sorry sine this time because it's opposite over adjacent. It's equal to x over two times twenty, where x is fifteen point thirty one. Okay. Now, if we're gonna use the cosine law in here. So going back to this one, opposite is x, no? So therefore, using cosine law, cosine law. So the opposite is x squared, okay? The other two are 20 plus 20 
minus 2 times 20 times 20 cosine of the opposite, which is 45 degrees. So let's check if the, act, the x is still the same, okay? Borrow calculator. Is it there? Is it there? Calculator. Ah, yes. Here. Oops. So, 20 square plus 20 square minus 2 times 20 times 20 cosine of 45 degrees. Yes, 45 degrees. And then square root of answer. Yep, it's the same, 15.31 inches. So I think this one's better, no? However, the problem lang with, with only finding x is that you have to use the three available um you can you can use the a is equal to s minus a s minus b s minus c because you have you are given three angles no but comparing this one with getting the a and the x you're actually just doing the area is equal to one half base times height but this times that this time the height is a no so what you're doing is actually a times x right base times height so that's why it's better now we do the first step maybe your second step is just for checking okay because um okay let's do both no for double checking so let's use the area is equal to one half base times height first so meaning to say one half times a which is your base your base is 15.31 inches times your height of, how much was the height? 18.48. Okay, so that's area of one, one triangle pa, no? So one half times 15.31 times 18.48. So therefore, that's 141.4644 inches squared. Okay, that's area of one one side lang muna, okay? Of course, the total or the com uh, complete answer here is that remember when we draw the octagon, it's we're just getting one triangle from the entire tri uh, from the entire polygon. Therefore, since it's an eight-sided polygon, therefore there are eight triangles created. So, to get the area of the entire octagon is actually a1 times 8. Okay? So that's 141.4644 times 8. So the answer is, let's double check. Yes, we got the same from the book. That's 131.72 one, inches squared. Okay? That's the final answer. Now let's double check using the, since you have three areas already, or we can also do the Area is equal to a squared sine a sine b over sine c, right? So, but that's not applicable because we only have one, one triangle, no? Sorry, one angle, interior angle. So, I guess the best method is really the s minus s minus a, s minus b, and s minus c because um, we have s already. So, going back to this triangle, this is 15.31. So that's 20 plus 20 plus 15.31 over 2. So 20 plus 20 plus 15.31 divided by 2. That's 27.655. And substitute that to the value. So that's square root of 27.655 times 27.655 minus 20. So you do it on your own, huh? 27.655 minus 20 again. And then 27.655 minus 15.31. So let's see if it has the same. Yeah, they have the same area. It's one 
1.41.4417. So I told you, as what I've told you, you have to multiply that by 8 because it is an 8-sided polygon. So times 8, that's still the same. 1131.53. I think there are only changes with the decimal values. But overall, it has the same answer. No? Yeah. Only on the decimal values. So that is because we use the x with only two decimal values. So for you to have almost the same answers, I always suggest use four decimal values, right? So that's for number one problem. Now let's go to number two problem. In number two problem, there are two equilateral triangles. So I mean to say equal triangles. Equal angle, interior angles are also equal because it's an equilateral triangle with 18 cm sides that overlap each other such that the overlapping area becomes a regular hexagon. So find the length of each side of the hexagon, find the radius, and compute the overlapping area. Hey, by the way, sorry, for number one problem, find the perimeter of the octagon. So obviously... Your perimeter, so going back to the to the drawing, your perimeter is the sum of all the sides. So that's 15.31 times 8. Okay. So sige lang, let's let's draw that as well. So to compute for the perimeter is x times 8, no, or 8x. Okay. Because you have eight sides in that perimeter. So 8 times 15.31. That is your perimeter. So 8 times 15.31, that's 122.48 inches. That's your perimeter. And then you're asked to compute the angle between two adjacent sides. So let's see the drawing. No? So what, what it really means is actually the angle between two adjacent sides. So the two adjacent sides are this one, right? you are going to find the interior angles of the two adjacent sides. So we know that um, the triangle, okay, we know that the, sorry, the polygon rather, we know that the polygon is um, equally divided. So we can go back to the first problem, no? The sum of the interior angles is equal to n minus 2 times 180 degrees. So throwback ta, guys, no? With our lesson from the first one no because we know that the sum of the interior angles is actually based on this problem you know that it's an eight-sided polygon times 180 degrees therefore that's six times 180 that's 1080 so in order to compute no for this for this uh angle no that was asked it's actually the measure of the interior angles within no so the measure of the interior angles is actually the sum of the interior angles divided by 8. So 1080 divided by 8, that's 135 degrees. So that's the answer for letter C. Okay, so let's proceed to number 2. Question in number 2 states here that as mentioned, there is an equilateral triangle na nag-overlap, creating a hexagon. So, two equilateral triangles. It's not really going to be perfect, guys. Ha? Okay, but it's it really forms a star, no? Now, it, it's not really that perfect. Sige, wait. I'll try to make as, as equal as possible. Okay. So, basta. <laughs> it looks like that. Wait, I think. Si Manggaling apart. Huh? Ah. Again, again. Okay, this is number two. All right, basta. Inana siya, basta equilateral siya. Meaning to say, they're all equal. Now, they overlapped. And you are told that the equilateral triangle actually measures 18 degrees. But as you notice, di lang siya equal, no? But as you notice, this is actually divided into three, right? The sides are divided into three equally. So therefore, if it is said that this is 18, 
in short, tig si 60 ay ni. Correct? 6 degrees, 6 degrees, 6 degrees. No? Oh my God, it's like scary number. But yes, it's really 6 cm per, per side. And the overlapping triangle is actually a hexagon. Let's try. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Yes, indeed. No, it's a hexagon. So, safe to say na 6, six pud na siya diha. Right? Now, find the length of each side of the hexagon. Hindi na siya 6. Eh. 6 pud na siya. So, that's the first answer, no? So, for number 1 is 18 cm divided by 3. It's 6 cm. That's the first answer. Okay? Next, find the radius. So, so may yung pasabot sa radius. There's a radius actually that is created inside. If, if I am correct. There's a radius created. Yeah. So, technically, you're asked to get the apothem. No? So, we're gonna divide that. Let me say equal. So, you're like, Asked to get the apothem, no? Okay. Okay. You're asked to get the apothem, which is actually a ra radius. This one is also a radius. No? That's also a radius. This one is also a radius. Okay. Going, if it, there is an inscribed circle, no? Within the hexagon. So, for number two question, this is how we're going to do it. So, we know already that a triangle is created in the hexagon. And if we equally divide this, okay, 360 degrees divided by 6. So, take 60 degrees, correct? And, diba, this is an equilateral triangle. So, therefore, this is also 60 degrees, actually. No? And then another uh, 60 degrees. Sum of the interior angles is 180. So, that is correct. Therefore, if you're asked to get the apothem, okay, there, we know that the side is six, no? The measure of the side is six. That was what we came up based on the drawing. So that's six, okay? If we extend that, this is now a right triangle, correct? And that's opposite over hypotenuse, that's? Sine. So the sine of 60 degrees is equal to opposite A over hypotenuse 6. So therefore, A is equal to sine 60 times 6. That's 5.20 cm. Okay? So that's your answer in number 2. That was the question. Find the radius, which is also the apothem. Okay? Next, of course, find or compute for the overlapping area. Obviously, the overlapping area is A is a hexagon. So, therefore, that's base times height, no? So, we know that this is 6 also. So, base times height na lang siya. You have already the height, which is equal to the radius or the apothem as well. So, therefore, for number 3, that's 6. Area is 5.2. Okay? So, to get the area of the hexagon, that's 6 times the area of one triangle. So, therefore, uh, to get the area of the hexagon is equal to 6 times 1 half base of 6 times height of 5.2. Okay. So your area of the 6 is 93.60 cm square. Okay. So if you have questions, please fill in or comment in the MS Teams so that I can get back to you on your questions, all right? So again, next, let's go to irregular polygons. So let me save this one. I'll give you a copy of this. Okay. Let's now have a new one, which is irregular polygons. So if it does not fit to any of the characteristics of a regular polygon with equal number of sides and equal number of angles. Therefore, it's considered an irreg 
polygon. Now, an irregular polygon, guys, is actually, basically, it's not regular in nature. No? It looks different. Just like, for example, this one. This is your problem number one. Find the area and perimeter of the polygon. So, side AB, so let's draw it. Okay, so this one is irregular. Okay, so an irregular polygon that looks like this. Okay, so it's like a takuri, no? So he, it is said that the side AB is 18 cm, right? Then BC and CD measure 12. So this is actually the C and this is D. So BC and CD is equal. They are 12 centimeters no? in measurement. Then the diagonal DF. So there is a DF, right? The diagonal DF is equal to AB. AB. Okay, yeah. So there is a dia uh, diagonal here, DF. So this is your F equal to AB, obviously, because it's actually a quadrilateral. No, there's a quadrilateral that is actually created in this drawing. And then side DF is parallel to side AB. Okay, that's also true. Side DE this time. Okay, this is DE. Side DE is parallel to side AF. Okay, that's also true. But they're not of the same value. Okay, they're just parallel. Doesn't It didn't say that they are equal. Okay, so be careful with the words again. Then angle A is 90 degrees. So obviously, no, drawing is 90 degrees. And angle C is 120 degrees. Sorry, doesn't look like a degree. Okay. And angle F is 130 degrees, okay? Then find the area of this irregular polygon, okay? So this is where you're, you're going to really determine that you're making a house that looks like this. Pwede ba? <laughs> this house look like, looks like this. You are asked by the owner how much is the square centimeters or the total area of his or her lot or house no and as you experience as you can see no if you are living in a subdivision or if you've seen um lots no done by architects in subdivisions you can always see that the lots are irregular in nature there are no perfect lots that's why you really have to learn the basics so that when you are given a task to solve for the area of that lot you can answer okay so therefore if your lot looks like this you will be asked by your client please provide me the square the area of my lot so you will have you have to really know how to solve it okay so in this case all right we start off with the easier ones no we have to compute for this one because whatever the measure of BD is, it is parallel to AF. Therefore, they are equal. And if that's equal, we're already finding three areas here. Area 1 or area... Okay, let's not have the same number. Let's have area 1, area 2, and area 3. No? So the easiest one is area 1 because missing man si BD. And we can always find BD because... There is already an angle provided and two sides. Okay, so use cosine law. So solve area one first. All right, so for area one, let's redraw. This is 12, this is 12, this is 120 degrees. Therefore, we can find the side BD. So for side BD, that's actually using cosine law. So using cosine law, that's BD squared, okay, is equal to 12 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 12 times 12 
cosine of the opposite angle, which is cosine 120 degrees. Therefore, we can find now the value of BD by squaring or getting the square root no, of the value. So 12 square plus 12 square minus 2 times 12 times 12 cosine of 120 degrees. So yes, it's 20.7846 cm. Cm, ano yun? Yes, cm. Okay. So let's double check our answer. Yes, we have the same answer as a book. So we're still good. Next is, we already have the value here. No? This is already 20.7846. Therefore, this is also 20.7846. Therefore, guys, we can already solve the area of the first one. Okay? Because you already have 20.7846 here. You can use the square S square uh, S S minus A, S minus B, S minus C, S minus D, no? So that's um square root of S. S minus A, S minus B, S minus C. Okay? So therefore, A is equal to um, finding S first. Let's find S first. So therefore, S is equal to 12 plus 12 plus 20.7846 divided by 2. So that's 12 plus 12 plus 20.7846 Divided by 2, that's S is equal to 22.3923 cm. cm. So therefore, your A is equal to just substitute 22.3923 times 12. Oh, sorry, times 22.3923. 12 minus 12 rather. Square because it's times 2, then 22.3923 minus 20.7864. So it's really that long, no? But we have to be patient. 22.3923 minus 12 square that and 22. 3923 minus 20.7846. Okay, so the area of the first one is oh yeah, we did already. 62.34, correct. 62.353. Eight six cm square. Okay, the other mean is also finding the the height first. Now we find the height first, and then um we will get that through dividing the the c here into sixty, and then we get the cosine, and it's gonna be very long. But this one is the easier one. No, just you have already the three sides, then use the square root of s, s minus a, s minus b, s minus c. Okay, so that's the first area. No, and that's area one. Next, going back to the drawing, we're done with area one. The area two is the easiest one because it's just a quadrilateral base times height. Lang, no, so for area two, that's very easy. That's just base times height, or basically your your BD times your height of 18, which is your A, A, B, yeah, A, B. Okay, so base is eight, uh, is 20.7846 times um, height of 18. Man na. No, the easiest one is the second one. 20.7846 times 18, that's... 374.1228 cm 
square. So you're done with area number two. Tama ba kung pagka-compute? Yeah. Okay. You're doing exchange. But yes, that's correct. Now, let's go to the third part. So the third part is already this one. Okay. It's another triangle. You know that that's 18. And then what's missing is here. No, we need to know that angle so that we can proceed with Sokatoa because it's a right triangle. So we know that 130 man and this one is 90 degrees, correct? So therefore, if it's 130 minus 90, therefore, this is actually 40 degrees. Oh, we can now find the area. We already have the height. What's missing is the base. So we need to search for DE first, okay? So if that's the case, it's opposite over adjacent. We will use tangent, okay? So redrawing that part, we're missing AE here. This is 18, this is already 40 degrees. So since it's again a right triangle, we use Soka Toa. So we're missing AE here, or we can call that as X. So therefore, that's opposite over adjacent. So tangent. Okay, tangent of 40 is equal to opposite na AE over adjacent, which is 80. So therefore, you are able now to find AE. So that's 18 times tangent of 40. That's 15.1038 cm. Okay? So therefore, the area of number 3 is 1 half base times height. You have already the base, which is 15.1038 times the height, which is 18. Okay? So you now have the value of the third angle. So, sorry, third area, 15.1038 times 18. So that's 135.9342. Okay, are you done? Not yet, no? Because the, the question is, find the entire area. So to get the entire area, area total is equal to area 1 plus area 2 plus area 3. So therefore, area total is equal to um, it's area 1 is 62.35386. It's too long. Wait, sorry. Area 1 is 623539. 62.3539. Plus, your area 2 is 374.1228. 374.1228. Plus, area 3 is 135.9342. Okay, so adding all the values, that's 62.3539 plus 374.1228 plus 135.9342 equals 572.4109 cm squared. So that's your area total. That's the final answer for this one. Okay. Now, if you will be asked, what is the perimeter of the entire uh, of the entire lot so that we can provide the right fence for it? So if that's the case, you all have uh, all sides are present, ba? Not yet, no? Fe is missing. So find Fe first. Obviously, if we're gonna find Fe here, that's just adjacent over hypotenuse, no? Because if you will have a mistake in solving AE, obviously your, your EF will also have a mistake. So as much as possible, find the one that is given. No, But anyways, if you've done correctly AE, your FE is also correct or your EF. So let's find EF first for us to get the parameters. So since 18 is given, so that's 
adjacent to over hypotenuse, so cosine. So cosine of 40 is equal to adjacent of 18 over hypotenuse, which is EF. So therefore, EF is 18 over cosine of 40 degrees. So 18 divided by cosine of 40 degrees, that's 23.4973 cm. So we can now find the perimeter. So just add everything. Since this is 23.4973, we can now add all, no? So adding all, that's 12 plus 12 plus 18 plus 20.7846 plus 23.49. 4973 plus the value of AE. How how much was that? 15.1038. So let's write it there. 15.1038. So you got not the parameter. So the parameter is sum of all the sides. So 101.3857 cm. Okay. All right, we're done. Now it's your turn. Okay, I want you to answer this one. Um, sige lang, I will provide a I will provide a different seat work. I will post it, but you can also do solve this one on your own if you want to. I don't know if there is an answer here in the book for that. So, para you have a guide, no? It's not present here. And wala na sa danga ko ang book. My book is so old. And this is really after the after the answering, I have we have to submit it. So wala she given she scratch. So I cannot really um, know if what's the answer for this one, but I'll give you a different one. I actually made a different one. So that's the end for the second part of the lesson for this week. And I hope you learned something today. Please feel free to ask questions once again. And please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. At least, guys, not a subscriber. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. And I hope you learned something. Bye.